Death Valley is known for its extreme heat, but it is spring, and so some water flows through the desert. These inviting creeks, though, are not a freshwater oasis. They are saltwater streams that can sometimes be far saltier than the ocean, and in the heat of the day can be nearly 50 degrees Celsius. Despite these extreme conditions, fish dwell just below the surface. These are the Death Valley pupfish, only found in two small springs and associated creeks down at the bottom of this valley of death. It is spring and these killifish, the best group of fishes, are beginning to prepare to spawn, with the males just beginning to show their distinctive yellow heads and blue flanks, defending small shoals of females. As they only inhabit a tiny area of the planet and the population fluctuates wildly, these are an endangered species, but other pupfish species of the American deserts are even rarer, such as the Devil's Hole pupfish, a species with one of the smallest global distributions of any animal. Basically restricted to the shallow water bit of this flooded cave entrance in the mountains above Death Valley, the opening into the depths of an aquifer. In a region with little rain, however, people rely on aquifers like this to drink, grow food, along with filling the all-important swimming pools. If too much is drawn up, more than is recharged by rainwater seeping into the ground, the level will drop, and this could eventually force people to abandon the area due to lack of water, but more immediately wipe out the tiny population of pupfish, which means people living nearby have a history of not liking the pupfish and getting up to all sorts of shenanigans and threats against them, including the county commissioner printing Kill the Pupfish bumper stickers. Now, I disagree with that sentiment, but let's consider that for a second. Should we let some species go extinct? The Devil's Hole pupfish inhabits an area smaller than a New York apartment, nearly isolated from the rest of the world. If they were to go extinct, no critical strand in the web of life would be cut, an environmental cataclysm would not befall the nearby towns, and with an annual cost of conservation nearly $750,000, Perhaps that is money that could be spent on a different endangered species or ecosystem to restore, because we have to save the world on the cheap, apparently. As the current extinction crisis continues, we unfortunately will have to grapple with a version of the trolley problem, entire species that we must choose to either protect or condemn to annihilation. Now, you might be like, nobody who wants to protect species from extinction would ever consider this. And I wish you were right which is why I am here at a bridge spanning a canyon above the Colorado River. This is a favorite hangout of California condors, a majestic bird that once was on the very brink of extinction. But monumental conservation efforts have brought them back in a classic story of conservation success. But what you usually don't hear in that story is when the last remaining birds were all captured for the breeding program, they were treated with parasite medications. This exterminated a species of chewing louse only found on the California condor, perhaps along with any unique parasitic worms that inhabited the condor's digestive tract. This was done intentionally to improve the odds of successfully breeding the condors in captivity. But was that acceptable, should the California condor louse have been exterminated? I figure the best way to discuss the question of letting species go extinct is to answer it with one of the best ways to rank and compare stuff the internet has come up with. A tier list. Hello everybody and welcome to our endangered species trolley problem god squad tier list. I've never done one of these so hopefully it's okay. So um, yeah we're gonna be be ranking a bunch of endangered species um, on, 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 on how much we need you know how much we need to save, how much we need to protect these species, and if we really need to protect these species. Um, or is it just a waste of money? Anyway, so our, our top tier is save at all costs. This means, you know, we got to save this species. There's animals and plants mixed in here. Um, you know, the, we, the U.S. should be giving out endangered species aid for this one. Um, you know, it's critical. You know, if the economy has to be, you know, completely restructured or something, we, we got to do it. Um, keep up the conservation work is essentially like, let's keep doing what we're doing. I think we got a good thing going. Um, yeah, 
Uh, save on a budget is basically like, you know, we want the species to still be like in the wild and like do things, but like we're kind of spending a lot of maybe too much money for the ecological consequences of this species continued existence. So if we could like make it a little cheaper, you know, that would be nice. Um, then we have sell to rich people to fund other conservation projects because there's always a bunch of rich people who want to own endangered species. So, you know, put them up for auction and then use the proceeds to save one of the species on these higher tiers. I, you know, and then our final one is let them die. Like, you know, we should just let the species die. I, I hope that's pretty self-explanatory in our little trolley problem. Um, anyway. Let us begin. We have all of our different endangered species. Let's start with, I think, the giant panda. That that seems good. So giant panda, very famous. Everyone loves giant pandas. They're a famous example of a flag, flagship species and an umbrella species. Like, you know, they get conservation funds. They, in theory, protect a bunch of habitat. You know, they're the 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 sort of the the face of conservation through the World Wildlife Fund. Um, in 2020, China combined multiple national parks to create one giant panda national parks, three times the size of Yellowstone. Like, that's pretty impressive. Um, but we have some complexities in the, uh, in the literature. There's been research that has found that other species, particularly large carnivores like snow leopards, dole, and um, you know, predators like that um, have been declining in the range of the giant panda while the giant panda population has gone up. Like giant panda, we've spent a ton of money. Conservation of China has spent a ton of money and done a ton of work um, to get them from endangered to vulnerable. And, you know, it's, it's, it's a lot of money, but it's kind of sad to not see that um, the similar associated um, gains in the conservation of large predators. Um, the range, though, does help preserve many of China's smaller endemic um, vertebrates and invertebrates that live in this range. So yeah, so the giant panda. Um, also, you know, they're kind of hard to conserve. You know, they don't they don't like having sex. They uh, they like eating only one thing that's like nutritionally like non-valuable and like um, you know they're like a lot of money like to to like rent them from the Chinese government like a zoo has to like spend a million dollars a year which is like a lot it's just like a lot for them um I I, I think we've done some good work and there is some potential so uh, I'm going to say save them on a budget. Like, I know this is is controversial um, to a lot of conservationists um, to say that we actually want to save the giant panda. Um, you know, there's a lot that would say, let's just sell them to rich people or um, let them die. But I, I think, like, you know, if they're preserving a bunch of, like, the China's smaller biodiversity, like, I think that's 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 worth it. We should just, you know maybe cut it down, maybe, maybe focus on trying to save a, a species that's more useful um, for, um, that would protect them as well as others. Maybe the dole, I don't know. Tigers, I don't know. And speaking of which, um, let's do the tiger next. Um, tigers are another popular species. I think I read somewhere they're actually the most famous animal species, the most popular animal species, like more than dogs and house cats, which is insane. Um, they're a decent umbrella species. They, though, need a lot of space, um, but not as much space as, like, some probably better umbrella species like Dole um, because dogs just need much more space than cats um, to hunt. Um, there have been sort of ongoing conservation gains and losses is how I would describe um, tiger conservation is basically, like, oh yeah, the, the tigers are up and oh no, they're down and they're up and they're down. And it's just sort of this like this endless seesaw of of tiger conservation being kind of a mess. Um, really to save tigers though, we really need to up, up it um, because like to really up those tiger populations, we really need to create large um, continuous tiger habitat 
which is not something that's mostly found within their current range. And so, you know, I like tigers. I think we should save tigers. So uh, I think, um, I don't know. I think, I think, I think we need to find ways to, um, to sort of up that, um, how, you know, figuring out how to live among, alongside them. I think there's still a lot of work to do on tigers. Um, okay. We got next is elephants. People also love elephants. People just love elephants. Um, uh, they have a lot of threats. They, um, they can be pesky when they raid crops. Their ivory is valuable. Um, you know, they eat a lot though. I mean, they're like culling them at some point, although I haven't heard of an elephant cull in a while, probably because it's a bad idea to shoot endangered species. Um, let's see, they're really important, um, umbrella species when it comes to ecosystem engineers. Um, you know, they like completely alter the landscape. They're very important. Um, but I don't know. I, I think to them, I think like, it's kind of a hard one. I'm, I, 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 I'm like joking that I'll put them on save on a budget or something or let them die, but I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna say we should kill elephants. I, I think we should, I don't know. I don't know. Save at all costs. Keep up the conservation work. Um, I think we got to save elephants. I think elephants are top tier. They need to be saved. They're important. People love them. Okay. Ah, here's the condor. Uh, North America's largest scavenger, uh, terrestrial, like, um, obligate scavenger. Um, but it's a very expensive conservation program. It's like $2 million a year. Um, it's a lot of money. Um, they've eked a lot. The thing that, you know, like they're really important, like scavengers are important. That puts them at high list. But the thing is, is that like ecologically before like the DDT and the lead, which is their current threat, um, I think that they kind of, they kind of got, um, they're only basically restricted to a few areas because after the um, Pleistocene loss of megafauna, there's just nothing for them to eat. So they're kind of restricted to the Pacific coast. So maybe one day we can get them back over the, like, ecologically significant. But I really think, also I think that, like, most of what can be done is being done, like, we're, you know, with a little, you know, conservationists are trying their best to get hunters to, like, switch to um, copper bullets because, so they don't fragment and the vultures don't eat them. So, like, and it, we're very close. We're like, it just a little bit more work and a little bit more outreach and like we're there and, but that's all like ongoing. And so I feel like we're spending almost as much as we can on condors. And hopefully that's enough um, to get people to be like, yeah, we should save condors. It's mostly just education though. And like getting the public behind condors, like especially hunters. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, speaking of condors, let's go back to the video and let's talk about that California condor chewing louse. Should we have let the California condor chewing louse go extinct? So they were a parasite on an endangered species, the, the California condor. Um, and so like, yeah, I can see like, you know, they should have killed them. But um, the one problem is, is that, you know, they might have been, after co-evolving with the California condor, they might be sort of that obligate thing, like condors can defend themselves against their um, parasite. And so if they're gone, which they are now, um, they could have, um, you know, it's potential that one day condors are going to get colonized by a more... Um, sort of generalist pest, parasite, louse, that's going to be really bad for the condor population and become a very big threat to their conservation that would not have happened had the condor louse not gone extinct. But I don't really know. I, I personally think they should have tried to save them. So we're going to say save on a budget because no one's going to spend any money to save parasites. But I want to at least say that like that was probably a bad idea. Um, I'm going to come here and say that a louse is as valuable as a, as a giant panda. That is going to be the takeaway from this video. Um, that's cool. Uh, anyway, uh, let's move on to our focal group, our focal species of this video, the pupfish in uh, the devil's hole pit pupfish in specific, specifically. So I think they're kind of cute. I love the devil's hole pupfish. Um, 
but they nearly cost like over just over a quarter of what the condor costs. And like condors are important. They're scavengers. They have like wide ranging ecological benefits. The pupfish doesn't. Um, the pupfish live in a little tiny pool and that's it. And so like for the amount of money that we're spending on them, I don't think that it's worth it. So I'm not, I can't, I can't put pupfish, sell them to rich people, even though like, Hey, you know, there's a lot of like aquarium people who'd probably like jump at the opportunity to keep some incredibly difficult to care for killifish. But, um, I am going to put save on a budget. Um, I, I can't, I can't say we're going to get rid of the, the devil's hole pupfish. Uh, Ooh, the honeybee. This is an interesting one. Um, this is a, this is a species that we all know. We all love maybe, except when they sting us. Um, they're a pollinator insect. Pollinators are really important and pollinators are declining worldwide. Um, now the thing is, is that honeybees are not native to North America. That's their, their big thing. Like nothing in North America really needs the honeybee, um, and the colony collapse disorder, like, like bumblebees, the native bees, they're also declining. Um, but honeybees suck up all the attention. Um, that said, they are important in Europe and they are important um, in a lot of our crops. They are like, they pollinate something like a third of North America's like crops. Yeah, they don't pollinate, you know, um, new world crops like potatoes and tomatoes, but, and like they don't pollinate grain, but they like pollinate like apples and cherries and melons and cucumbers. Um, there's a whole bunch of threats that probably are causing their decline. Um, there's fungi, there's viruses, there's the mite Varroa destructor, which is a great scientific name. Um, and then when you're just moving hives all over because they can't feed on anything, um, you're just like, because there's no food in these, these, these giant monocultures for bees, it's just not, it's just not good. Um, and then of course you're used, they use like antibiotics and like actual like insecticide on them to kill the Varroa destructor. And then also you have like electromagnetic radiation, GMO and climate change also being implemented. I think it's a mess. I think we should let the honeybee die. Um, just because also just, I don't, I'm just, I'm just mean to, you know, like if we, if we, if we can't like get our agriculture together and actually like be responsible for agriculture, we don't, we don't deserve to eat. Um, salmon, salmon's a good one. I love salmon. We all love salmon, you know, sushi, cedar plant, barbecue, all good. Um, salmon are cool. They migrate up rivers. They're, you know, they're really important. They, the bodies, they migrate up a river from the ocean and then they die after they lay eggs because of all the energy they expend. And um, then they just sort of rot. Um, and that releases a bunch of energy taken from the ocean and gives it to the trees of the forest. They're super important. That said, I think salmon are a lost cause. Um, I would describe salmon conservation as a conservation dystopia. So basically the U S government just throws money at salmon. Um, like I think I've looked at the list, like we talked about how expensive like condors and pupfish were like of, I, I think, and this, I, I haven't double checked in a while, but like last time I, a couple years ago when I was looking at, I had a class that talked about the most expensive endangered species to protect and the most money. So of the top 10 most expensive conservation projects, um, in the United States at the time. This was like around 2017. Um, the, uh, 2017, 2018, um, salmon were different salmon strains and runs were, were eight of those 10. The other two being the stellar sea lion and the Southwestern willow flycatcher. Um, but, like salmon are just, they spend all this money. And basically all this is, is to ensure that there are salmon that people can fish for. Um, so that there is the, that they're keeping, it's basically just keeping the capitalism surrounding salmon alive. It's like a nightmare. Um, Alaska has real salmon, which is nice, but um, very few wild rivers, 
there's very few wild rivers left that salmon can really exist in. And I think some 80% of the Columbia River system, which is was once one of the most productive salmon places, um, um, drainages for salmon, only like 80% or basically 80% of the salmon are, um, are hatchery raised. So how we raise salmon is you throw them in a hatchery and then they go to a, like a concrete tank. Then people like mix the, the, the eggs and sperm. And then they like, sometimes they put the salmon back out, but like ecologically they're dead. So, uh, I say let salmon die because if we can't be responsible with our resources, we don't deserve to eat salmon. Um, Let's move on to the lappet faced vulture. So I said um, before that obligate scavengers are really important. And, but they're almost like, but there's something beautiful about old world vultures in how amazing of obligate scavengers they are. So um, lappet faced vultures are really important in that because they're usually the first vulture to show up because they're specialized to eat the hide of carrion, of a dead animal. Um, and so they break into the carcass so that other vultures, like griffin vultures, can get at the meat. And so the one thing I would say in the old world, really just saving one vulture is not the most important because it's the community that does it. So you have lappet face come in, they eat the hide, then like griffin vultures come in, they eat all the flesh. You've got like Egyptian vultures and um, hooded vultures that are eating all the scraps. And then you have afterwards, you have the lamagires come in and they eat the bones. And so in a day, you can take go from a zebra carcass to just a bloody smear on the ground. And that is just incredible. Um, and it's really good at making sure that like disease isn't spreading. And so, yeah, I'm going to put lappet face vultures, save at all costs. They're really important. Um, overall, the, I think they're one of the more, you know, just because they're the ones that open the carcass for all the other vultures. That kind of puts them a little above, you know, really important in that community. But also, like just to say that like, in terms of like managing disease and animal, you know, various diseases in the old world in Africa and in and Southeast Asia, like condor, like vultures are really, really important. And those countries really need them. Um, okay, let's move on. The blue whale, the largest animal in the world. Um, they were basically whaled. They're basically hunted to near extinction. Um, um, now a bunch of ship collisions, um, are threatening them because we ship all of our stuff across the seas. So they get hit by these giant ships and whales are important for carbon sequestration. Um, personally, uh, the largest animal that's ever existed, like you have to save that at all costs, like letting the blue whale go extinct, like would be such a shame. I like cannot fathom that. We got to save the the blue whale. Anyway, let's see. What do we got? We next have the gorilla. We love gorillas. You know, gorillas are cool. They're one of our close relatives, but they also like, that means that, you know, we also like to kill them because we don't like our, anything that's related. We don't like anybody who's kind of related to us. We wiped out the Neanderthals and all the other hominids. And now, you know, we can't stand each other and we want to kill all the great apes. So, um, yeah, I love gorillas though. Um, yeah, we shouldn't kill our closest kin. Um, but we need those precious metals. So a lot of the concert, the large conservation threat to gorillas is mining for precious metals in Africa that basically power all the technology, including the technology you're watching this video on and that I'm using to record this video. So we're all sort of complicit in the extinction of gorillas. And so, I kind of feel like we have to put that at all costs. Like we need to find a solution. We should just stop using technology. That's 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 the moral of the story. This this video that is on technology. We shouldn't use technology. That's what we're going with. Ah, uh, the, the, the vaquita, the smallest cetacean in the world. So we have the largest and then we have the smallest, these little tiny porpoises from the Gulf of California. There's maybe like 10 left. Um, Basically, I've talked about them a little bit in the past, um, but basically, like, there's a huge fishing industry for stuff out of the Sea of Cortez, whether it's shrimp or the swim bladders of another in, of this big endangered drum. And it's just not 
going. And every conservation effort has basically failed at this point. They've spent a lot of money trying, you know, the Mexican government's tried, but it's just, it's like none of the conservation efforts can have really like worked because like a lot of the fishermen are like indebted with, like they get indebted to like the drug cartels. And then you have fishermen that just claim that these the vaquita don't exist that like the mexican government made them up to like take away their rights which i don't know i people are insane um i think like at this point we like at this point i would i'd be like oh yeah we should spend all the money but like it's been so bad and they're so restricted in terms of their range like maybe maybe we should maybe we should try putting it on a budget like just try to like try our best but i don't i don't know unless you were to just like ecologically they're probably not the most significant battle to fight in the world and so um yeah let's uh i think just try to save them on a budget Okay, um, Stresemann's bristle front. This is this is not a picture of a Stresemann's bristle front. Um, this is their close relative, the Slady bristle front. But I just needed a picture for one. Uh, this is probably the world's rarest bird. Um, they're probably less than fifteen. They're from the Brazilian Atlantic forest. Um, basically, they lost all their range to like cattle farming, um, and then their reserves that they're in have like burned. And like IUCN has like no hope. So like. I think we should protect the forests, but uh, I think I think we're just ultimately going to have to let the Stresemann's bristle front die, and I think that's that's quite sad. But I think that's that's what's going to happen. Um, okay, we got the gopher tortoise nest next. We love the gopher tortoise. You know, they are vulnerable. They're really important for many species in um, their range. They um, that use their burrows for various things, including escaping wildfires. And so they are a keystone species that like about 400 other species are associated with. So we should save them at all costs, but I think their conservation is actually going pretty well. So um, besides banning vehicles, which I don't know, we could say we could keep doing the good work or we could like just like ban cars. I think we should ban cars. I think that's, I think, I think, I think, I think I like that. That sounds good. Uh, the golden barrel cactus. So golden barrel cactus is weird. They're incredibly rare in the wild in their little tiny range um, on volcanic slopes in the Matoral. Is that how you pronounce it? I'm quickly going to check the yeah Matoral Ica region of Mexico but they're super common in captivity. Like everyone owns a golden barrel cactus. So essentially they're already kind of here. Um, honestly, like if we could like, just like sell them and then like, but like, like use them to fund other conservation projects, that'd be neat. Um, I don't know. I don't know how important they are. Like as a pollinator in the overall region, they're fairly range restricted. And so like, yeah, they might be considered like a keystone or flagship species of the Matoral, but I think that's more of like, they're the coolest thing from the Matoral. And so like, I've, if you can only kind of come up with a cactus, that's, that's, that's kind of, that's going to be difficult. Um, let's look at our final organism, the giant sequoia. So they need forest fire to reproduce, but these big giant fires that are being caused by, you know, a century of poor um, fire management choices and um, and fire and, and now like climate change driven fires can kill them. Um, they only inhabit a small region though. That's, that's one of their, their challenges is they um, can only inhabit a really small region um, because they're basically like a, a, a prehistoric species that's restricted to a very small area. Um, they grow in groves, but they are actually really important in their ecosystems um, and they need some other organisms. They rely on longhorn beetles and Douglas squirrels to disperse their seeds. They live a really long time and 
you know, we got to, I mean, they're huge. They're like the largest plants in the world. Like we got to save them. But I think we're, you know, like, like, I think keep up what's been going on. I think that's, 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 that's wise. And so, yeah, let's, um, let's go with this and, and, and kind of put my, my, my final, final run through of my thoughts of this. So yeah, here's our, here's our tier list of, of the species we should let die and the species we should sell to rich people and the species we should try to save on a budget. And the ones that I think we're kind of going, we're pretty much, we're almost in the right direction. And then the ones we need to save at all costs, I kind of want to move gorillas back here. Um, I think we should save them at all costs, but like we're spending a lot of money on, we are spending a lot of money on gorillas and like the, like, you know, like the, the all costs would be like, let's get rid of electronics, which I think would be, is a very challenging thing to push. I'm like, I feel like I would rather not have a car than not have an iPhone, which is really, really interesting. Um, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to keep the gorillas up here. Um, yeah. So I hope you, you enjoyed me doing an endangered species tier list, trying to use this common internet thing as a, as a, or internet meme. I don't know what, is it tier list an internet meme? I'm like really illiterate when it comes to internet culture. Um, Yeah, uh, trying to use that for like a conservation video. I was just curious to see if I could do it. And I, I think it turned out kind of nice. I, I, like, I kind of like this. This was fun. Yeah, let me know if you want me to do this again, I guess, with something else, maybe a more positive topic. <laughs> anyway, let's, uh, let's do the wrap up for this video. I do want to make it absolutely clear that I am in no way suggesting that we should let any of these above species go extinct or that anything I said in the ranking reflects my actual opinions. I am a proud member of the Save the Pupfish camp. This video and tier list was just a way to illustrate this topic that we unfortunately have to consider because we are losing irreplaceable biodiversity daily. Decisions, sadly, will have to be made as we cannot save everything. Anyway, if you liked a wildlife conservation video in the style of something popular online, I have a top 10, though really 25, rarest taxa on Earth, where I rank which group of organisms has proportionally the most threatened species.